Hello, this is Abby from OllieHolly.com. In this video, I will be teaching you how you can crochet amigurumi balls in different sizes. This is not a tutorial for beginners where I give you the exact pattern, but it will be more like an entry class to amigurumi design where I walk you through the process of designing a basic ball. So, if you're not familiar with amigurumi already, Please go through my Amigurumi playlist for beginners first before proceeding with this one. I've linked it in the description box down below and up here as well. And as usual, you'll find all the timestamps and the corresponding blog posts linked in the description box down below as well. Before I start, I also wanted to note that designing Amigurumi involves a lot of trial and error. When designing a piece, even one as simple as a ball, I still find myself having to frog my piece to get the desired shape. I'm laying out the basics in this tutorial, but you will need to play around with a number of rounds on your own to try things out. You'll likely frog your projects a couple times to improve the shape until it is to your liking. Making and remaking is very tedious, but trial and error is a completely normal part of amigurumi design. Anyway, without any further ado, let's start designing a ball. When designing amigurumi, the first thing you need to do is to break your design up into different sections. This makes it easier to see what you need to do in order to achieve the desired shape. To make this ball easier to understand, I've broken it down into five different sections. For more complicated shapes, you'll have to break it down into a lot more sections. Section 1 right here is a circle. The first thing you will need to do when creating a ball is to crochet a circle. Personally, my default pattern when designing amigurumi is to work in increments of 6 stitches per round. So what that means is, I start with 6 stitches in my magic circle, then I increase in each stitch to increase the stitch count of my next round by 6 stitches. After that, I will continue to increase each round by 6 stitches until my circle size is to my liking. So what that looks like with a basic pattern is this. Like I said previously, I start with 6 single crochet in my magic circle, then in round 2, I'm increasing into each stitch. You'll then notice that the stitches between the increased stitches increase by one each round. You'll also see that the stitch count of each round increases by six per round because you're increasing a total of six times each round. You can also work in increments of eight, which some people like to do. When working in increments of 6, your circle will start to get more dome-like as your circle gets bigger. So you'll see that in this piece here, this is worked in increments of 6 increases. The highlighted stitches here are the increases and you'll see that there are 6 of them. Working in increments of 8 creates a flatter circle, which is more suitable for some projects. Here's a comparison of the two of them side by side. To work in increments of 8, you just have to start off with 8 single crochet stitches in your magic circle instead of 6. Then you would increase the same way, so that would be 8 increase. Then instead of repeating single crochet and increase 6 times, you'll be doing that 8 times, and so on and so forth. 
Another thing I wanted to talk about before continuing with the ball is how you can create a rounder circle when working in the round. When I first started making amigurumi, the way I would increase each round is by increasing on top of the second stitch from my increase from the previous round. This is typically how most patterns are written for beginners, as it's easier to understand. So the patterns typically look like this one. However, I quickly noticed that instead of being round, my circle was looking a little bit more hexagonal. That's because the increased stitches were stacked right on top of each other and creating a corner that is a little bit more pronounced and pushing it out. So to make my circle rounder, I decided to stagger the increases so that they're not always sitting on top of each other. This rounds out the slight peaks a bit better and makes the increase less obvious in projects. So here's typically what my patterns will look like for the first six rounds when I'm working my circle this way. Now looking at round four, so that's this one and this one right here, you'll notice the difference between the basic pattern and the one I prefer. Instead of just working two single crochet and increasing a total of six times all the way around, what I'm doing here is I'm splitting up the first two single crochet stitches so that one of the two stitches is sitting at the beginning of the round. And the second stitch ends up at the end of the round. Similarly, in round six, I split up the four single crochet at the beginning of the round so that two of the single crochet can sit in the front of the round and two towards the end of the round. You'll also notice that with each round, I'm still increasing the total stitch count per round by six stitches. But instead of the increased stitches stacking very neatly on top of each other like you see in this piece right here, it's a little bit more staggered so that no one point is sticking out more. How big your circle is will roughly dictate how big your ball will be. If you start off with a smaller circle, like in this green ball's case, this is a four round circle, your ball will be smaller. And with this red ball here, I started off with a five round circle, so it's slightly bigger than the green ball. The bigger the circle you start off with, the bigger your ball. For section two, I've actually divided it into two different parts because there are two different parts that need to work together to help us gradually get to the diameter of the ball. Section 2A is where we start building the sides of the ball. To do so, all you have to do is work one single crochet into each stitch of this round and not increase. And just as a note here, from this point on, anytime I say side building round, it means you're just working one single crochet into each stitch and not increasing for that round. The number of side building rounds you will need will depend on how big your initial circle is. The bigger your circle, the more side building rounds you will need. All the balls I have here are quite small, so they all need a round or two of side building rounds for this section. The more side building rounds you work, the more oblong your ball will become. The number of rounds you need here will also depend on how tall each of your stitches are. This will depend on a couple things. The weight of the yarn you are using, so the thicker your yarn, the taller your stitches will be. As an example, this red ball here is Aran weight, and this yellow ball here is lace weight. When you put them side by side, you'll notice that it's pretty obvious that the stitches on this yellow ball here are much shorter than the stitches on this red ball here. 
Your stitch type will also make a difference. The X stitch, which is what I'm using in this ball here, is slightly shorter than the standard single crochet stitch. And finally, your hook size will affect the height of your stitches as well. Using a smaller hook will compress your stitches a little bit more. So keep all of these things in mind while designing your ball. This is why trial and error is an inevitable part of amigurumi design because so many factors affect the shape of your piece. Next, in section 2B, we're going to introduce in an increase round. Doing so slowly flares out the ball to help us create a curve to the side of the ball before hitting the equator of the ball. So in this case, as a reminder, this increase round here would increase my stitch count by 6 stitches. Also, you'll see that this part here is slowly curving outwards. For a smaller ball like this one, after you work section 2B, you can just skip right ahead to section 3 to start working on the equator of the ball, which is the widest part of this ball. If you start it off with a larger circle, You'll likely have to repeat the entire section 2 a few more times. Doing so will help introduce a more gradual curve before you get to section 3, which will be the widest part of our ball. Your final increase round, which is the final section 2B that you work, will dictate how wide the widest part of your ball will roughly be. So when you look at this ball here, you'll see that this here is the final increase round. And the widest part of the ball is only slightly wider than this round here. Section 3 is where we start building the equator of the ball. This entire section is just made up of side building rounds. The number of rounds you will need here will depend on the size of your ball. Looking at these two drawings here, you'll notice that the section 3 in the smaller circle is shorter than the section 3 in the larger circle. Some people will also work an increased round right at the equator. But I find that once your piece is stuffed, your side building rounds without an increased round will actually get pushed out enough for a perfect rounded look. So an added increase round there would actually make that area stick out a little bit too much and isn't necessary. However, feel free to try it out and play around. Like I said before, trial and error is a huge part of designing amigurumi. Section 4, just like Section 2, will be divided into two parts. It's very similar to Section 2, but instead of working an increase round, we'll be working a decrease round. Section 4A is the exact opposite of Section 2B. This is where you start to work your decrease round to slowly taper in the sides. So because my ball is worked in increments of 6, I'll be decreasing this round by 6 stitches. You can see the decrease round right here and how it slowly pulls in the side to help us create that bottom curve of the ball. Section 4B, just like Section 2A, is where we work our side building rounds to bring the sides of the ball down to where it meets the final circle. And like I mentioned in section 2, if you're working a bigger ball, you will likely need to repeat this entire section 4 a couple times to make the taper a little bit more gradual. In our final section, which is section 5 right here, We'll be working decrease rounds until we get our stitch count down to 12 stitches. 
Just like before, I'm decreasing each round by 6 stitches until I'm down to 12 stitches in the final round. Also, as a side note, I personally do not like decreasing until there are 6 stitches left, because I find that the hole doesn't close up as neatly with my hole closing method. Also, because my bottom circle is one round short when compared to the top circle, I will sometimes add an extra side building round to section 4 for the bigger balls. For the smaller ball here, I've kept both side building round sections, so that's section 2A and 4B, to the same number of rounds. So that's really it for designing a basic ball. All you have to do after tapering the sides of the ball in is to stuff the ball and close the hole. You can experiment with the amount of side building rounds and the amount of the different sections you have to change the shape of your piece. Now, if all that sounds too complicated and you don't have the time for experimenting, the easiest way you can make a smaller or bigger ball with an existing pattern is to change the weight of your yarn and the size of your hook. Here I have two balls made with the exact same pattern. This one here is made with Aran weight yarn and a 3.25mm hook. This smaller one here is made with a soft weight yarn with a 2.25mm hook. Just keep in mind that when changing up your yarn weight and your hook size, the height of your stitches will also change. Patterns are usually written with a specific weight of yarn and hook size in mind. When you change that up, your finished item may not look exactly the way it was designed to look. The same pattern worked with a lighter weight yarn may look a little bit shorter. And when you size up your yarn weight, sometimes your finished item will look more oblong. And that's it for this tutorial. The method I've laid out for designing a ball in this video are the basics for designing amigurumi. You can take methods here and apply them to slightly more complicated designs. So as an example, I have here my Daruma pattern. And the way it's worked up is actually quite similar to a ball. This piece can also be broken down into five sections. So right here, we're starting with section 1, which is a circle. Then for section 2, I repeated 2A and 2B all the way until here. So this is my final 2B round. So basically, after the initial circle, I worked a few side building rounds, then increased to slowly flare out the side and then repeated that entire section to slowly flare out the sides even more. And right here, I only have one round for my section 3, which is the widest part of my piece. For this piece, because I want the bottom to sit flat, I actually skip the entire section 4 and jump straight into section 5. And in section 5, I just decreased each round by 6 stitches until I hit 12 stitches in the final round. As you can see, it's quite similar to designing a ball. Understanding how the side building rounds and increase slash decrease rounds work together to affect the shape of your piece is the first step to learning how to design amigurumi. If you're interested in making this daruma, you'll find the pattern on my blog. Thanks for following along with this video. I hope that this was helpful to you and I hope to see you in the next video.